what we are doing here at Las Vegas Rio is what we are doing in our investment business, meaning we're not teaching you to do something that we ourselves are not doing. Does that make sense? Yes. Because wouldn't that be hypocritical if we're telling you to go out and do one thing, but we're doing something else? And one of the things I want you to understand about what we're doing in, in the creating of a self safe environment, and those of you that have been around and been to our meetings before, is we are bringing you the people that we use in our business. What I want you to understand is I don't do everything myself. I have people that help me. Does that make sense? If you can't do everything on your own. And so one of the things, there are four things that you need to be doing in order to be a successful investor. Number one is, called, is the leads. It's called the loan process, L-O-A-N. Number one is the leads you generate. No, o stands for the offers you write. A stands for the analysis of the deal. And N stands for the negotiations. If you do nothing else and you do the loan process, you'll be successful. But I cannot stress to you enough that if you don't have the right leads, none of the other things matter. It doesn't matter how you analyze. It doesn't matter how, how many offers you write. It doesn't matter how great of a negotiator you are. If you don't have the right kind of leads coming in, then you are not going to be a successful investor. Does that make sense? So one of the reasons I brought you know, Brian and Nick to you is because they are experts at generating leads nobody else is generating. In fact, I've hired them. A lot of you are in this room right now because of them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because they are generating types of deals and leads and using the internet to help me in my business. So, who here thinks that they might want more leads? Raise your hand. Who here thinks that Brian and Nick might be able to help you in that? Raise your hand. Well, in that case, let's give a huge uh, Las Vegas Rio welcome to Brian Baker and Nick Martin. <laughs> Brian, I need you to go back. Go back for a second. I said a huge Las Vegas Rio welcome. <laughs>
when you can tell, when you can advertise and tell other people exactly what you're looking for, you're more likely to find it. And if you don't tell other people what you want, you're not going to be able to get it. That's what advertising is all about, right? So is there anybody here who would like to share in more detail what they're looking for so the rest of us can help you find it? Would anybody like to share? Yes, ma'am. I'm looking for a home, a single family home, um, uh, preferably uh, four bedrooms, but three would be acceptable. Uh, two bathrooms, two and a half would be perfect, and at least 1,800 square feet. Any yard that's enclosed because I have a dog. The dog rules, so um, that's what I'm looking for. And I would like, technically, I'd like to not exceed $1,100 total in payment. And I know that's low, but I know there's a, I know there's a lot out there, so I know it's possible. That's perfect. That's perfect. That is a lot more detailed than when we first stood up, which is okay. awesome. That is better, much better. When you can get very, very detailed with what you want, you're going to find it, okay? Because you know exactly what you're looking for. Is there anybody else you'd like to share? Actually, I think I may have one for you, but it's a fixer upper. I don't mind. It's a complete fixer upper. He's well, good. He wants to do solid financing. Yeah. Um, and you would like to get something in place at about eleven hundred a month. Uh, but the only thing that I do, the only stipulation I do want, I, I like the area that I live in, and I currently live in Aliante out north. It's in North, it's Rancho Indicator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. Let's have the rest of that. That's all right. That's, that's all right. good, though. That's good. Thank you. Sir, did you want to? Uh, yeah, I'm looking for, uh, actually, I've been looking at trying to get a couple of apartment buildings. I've been eyeing two in the areas where my daughter's at right now. Okay. One's a 20 unit, one's a 26 unit. Uh, one's, uh, both of them are going for about 800000 a piece, and that's what I've been working on trying to get here. <coughs> They're already fully renovated. Okay, okay. Is there anything in particular that you're looking for from people here, maybe, in regards to those deals? Uh, you know, well, me, that's what I'm doing deals right. here for, so I'm pretty much setting up my, my, my son and my daughter. You know, it's kind of like management company there, trying to get them kind of slotted into the business sure. while I do stuff here. But I'm also looking here as well. I'd like to get uh, multi units here. Okay. okay. There you go. Does anybody else want to share with us? Advertise. Yes, ma'am. I'm looking for um, a single family home that is distressed, um, three bedroom, two bath, in a neighborhood with good schools, um, high owner occupancy. Um, Definitely not in the hood. More middle class, working class. Good, very good. Very good. For instance, if she had just said, "I want a three-two," it could have been in the hood, right? Somebody could have come up with something that was or exactly you don't want, right? So you have to know exactly what you want when you're doing your market. Um, I also like to compare it to uh, throwing spaghetti against the wall. You know, throw a bunch of spaghetti over there, something will stick, right? But it may not be exactly what you're looking for, and the rest of the money that you threw at that. It, uh, more to the wayside. I'll talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. So, when you view this business as a game, what do you need to win it? Okay, what is your main goal? Um, and I'm talking about your why. Okay, what is your why for doing real estate investing? And so, write this down. Uh, when you know why you want something, you're more likely to take the effective actions necessary to get it. Okay, you're going to commit. Okay, if you don't have your why, and Chris talked about this as well, how do you, you know, where's your motivation? Where's your motivation to go out and do it? Okay, so for example, uh, my why is that I want $250,000 in my bank account at all times, plus I want at least $6,000 a month in passive income. Uh, why? Because I never want to feel obligated to work a job again. Okay, does this sound familiar to any of you? Raise one finger if it does. Okay. <laughs> this finger represents your one must have, your, your why. Okay. When you can tell other people what your why is, they're going to be more passionate about helping you to get it. Okay? You have to instill passion into other people and enthusiasm. Okay, that's when they really want to help you out. Um, would anybody here like to share their why while we're at it? The reason for doing real estate. Yes, sir. Um, if anybody's familiar with Simon Sinek, I use his model when I, when I talk about it. But <clears throat> my why is to basically have my financial independence so I can teach my kids how to create their own financial independence. Uh, the house, obviously, through real estate and, and through uh, prolific business. <coughs> Uh, and then, well, it's a prolific business. And then the what that I use with it is, is real estate because real estate is your largest money maker in the world. It's the create, biggest creator of millionaires. The wars have been fought over it, bloods have been shed over it. And I mean, it's that important, it's that powerful. And it's even though it's finite, if you know what you're doing, you can technically make it infinite. 
So that's why I choose real estate. So that's my why, and that's how I articulate it. Very good. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. That's good. I saw another hand go. Yes, sir. Uh, my why is to retire my mom. She's been working at Costco for 20 years. And oh, wow. Every day she has to go to work. She she works the front end, and it just it breaks my heart because she's stuck. And she did everything for me and my my three my brother and my sister, and it's time to retire her so she can be a, a full time grandmother. Very good. Oh, wow. And now, doesn't that make you feel better about wanting to help him out? Yeah. Especially? Yeah. Exactly. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else? Yes, um, My why is that I just I wanted to have more time to enjoy life. Um, I was working a job, and I make pretty good money at my job, but I was working all the time, nights and weekends, and I wasn't enjoying life. So I wanted more of my time back. Misdirected uh, repeat direct mailers. And I did that for about eight months. And I got calls, but I got no deals. Okay? I tried banded signs for 12 months. I got really good at placing them around town, inside and outside city limits, uh, on the ground, up high on poles, uh, near Walmarts, high traffic intersections. Um, I even got good at hiring people to do it for me. And yet I really got nothing serious out of it. I tried all these things you see here for months and months each. And 99% of the people that I got responding to me were a complete waste of time. Okay, does this sound familiar to any of you? Yes. yes. Yeah. This is me. I don't know if this laser probably works. No. This is me right here, enthusiastically starting out with that direct mailer. Okay? Thinking that every piece of mail I sent out was going to come back to me as money in my pocket. Alright? But over time I began to realize that other businesses were sending me the same type of mail and I didn't like it. Okay? All these places were trying to give me answers to questions that I hadn't even asked or had the time for. Like, do I want to do a hot tub? Uh, do I want insurance for a newborn? Do I want to go down to the dealership and buy a new car today? And so I started thinking about it, and I sat back, and I was like, you know what, i got to do the math. i got to really sit down and like, figure out what's going on here. So let me walk you through this. For a standard marketing campaign, for any type of marketing, okay, your typical response rate on your, on your marketing campaign is going to be about 3 to 5%. Okay? So that means for mailers, for instance, you're going to have to send out, well, for every 1,000 that you send out, 50 of them are going to give you a call back. Okay? And for those of you who do mailers in here, what are their calls usually like? What's my house worth? Uh, how come you don't remember my address? You just mailed me. <laughs> well, see, take, take, me off your list. take me off your list, right? Do not call, right? So of the 50 that actually respond to you, 10% okay, of those are actually going to re uh, convert and request an offer from you, okay? 10% are going to request a bona fide offer. So now we've gone down from 50 down to 5 out of 1,000. Okay, now of those, not everybody's going to accept your offer, okay? Their situation is different than yours, you don't know what's going on. Typically about 20% for beginner investors, maybe even less than that, will accept your offer, okay? So think about that. It takes 1,000 mailers, on average, to get a single deal. That's 1,000 mailers. So, when you really break down the numbers, that comes out to about 15 hours of set of time, including driving to the post office, uh, putting stamps on and everything about $1,400 worth of printing, signing, stamping, stuffing, uh, paper cuts, sticky fingers. I remember all these things. I did this myself for a while. And not only that, the other 49 people that didn't turn into a post deal, you're going to have to talk to them for pro probably about 10 minutes each on average. Okay? So that's an additional eight hours of wasted time that does not turn into a deal. So for a direct mailer campaign, on average, you're talking about 23 hours of time and $1,400 to get a single deal. Now, that's not to say it doesn't work. You can get a deal tomorrow, day one, or it might take you two years. Okay? Same thing with every form of marketing, right? But I want to put it in perspective so you understand the kind of math that we're talking about when gurus say, hey, do direct mail. Yeah, right. It's my Florida time zone one. Does everybody understand that? Raise your right thumb if you understand this. All right. So I looked at this mail and I said, you know what? And I was doing this myself. I was completely tired of it. I said, you know what? There's got to be a better way. Okay, and that's when it hit me. When I seek answers or products or distractions, I go online. Okay, I have a question, I get an answer. I want a product, I buy it. And I said, wait a sec, I'm just like everybody else. Everybody searches online. Even the poorest of people now have government subsidized smartphones. I know this because I saw them on the bridge in Las Vegas uh, 
just, a, just yesterday, actually. And they're searching online, too. These homeless guys. What's up, like, who are you calling? So I thought about it this morning, okay? And what I figured out is that what we really search for online is based on our emotions in that moment. Okay? It's based on our emotional impulse. Okay, so let me do a little test to prove to you. Raise your hands if when you want to find something, the first thing you do is go to your mailbox. No? Okay, raise your hands when you, when you want to find something. The first thing you do is get your car and look for a road sign. Nobody? Okay, how about a business card? TV ad? Newspaper? Raise your hands if when you want to find something. The first thing you do is go online. Precisely. Everybody makes decisions based on their emotions, and then they go online and back it up with logic. Okay? You need to advertise online. Everybody goes there first. This is how it works. Okay, you go to Google, you type in a search. The information pops up. Guess what's at the top? Ads, okay? Ads that respond to that emotional impulse that the person just typed in. Okay, these are called pay-per-click ads, meaning that the advertiser does not pay until somebody clicks on their ad and goes through to their website. No money is paid until the ad is clicked, meaning that each of these ads you see here can show for free a million times before any money is paid. Now think about that in terms of a direct mailer. You're paying for every time a person sees your direct mail. Dollar twenty-five, dollar, whatever it is for that mailer to get out through the mail, okay? So if the advertiser is only paying when the ad is clicked, how does the math compare? Well, if you take the same standard rates for any marketing campaign, the 5%, 10%, 20%, <coughs> and your cost for every click is about 10 bucks, then you're looking at $500 per deal <coughs> for online advertising. Okay, that's three times the deals for the same amount of money uh, versus a direct, uh, comfortable direct mail marketing campaign. So I want you to raise three fingers and say three times the deals. Three times the deals. All right, so if you're paying attention. So now you're getting to realize the power of online ads to get you more money, more time, and more peace of mind. So I want to help you get set up online and get you in this game. Just imagine having a website like one of these. Beautiful graphics, clean, simple to understand, easy and fast to use. Say, oh yeah, if you like these kind of websites. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. That's great, because you can build one or have them built for you fast. Okay, I recommend starting with a domain uh, provider like GoDaddy, and buy a domain name like BobIceHouses.com. Okay? And then get a, a website editor like Weebly, to go in there and build your website with easy drag and drop buttons, text, that sort of thing, fill it in. Okay? Follow these tips. And remember, you guys can photograph this stuff too. Okay? Follow these tips when picking a name for your website. Okay? You want to make sure that you set up credibility, niche, professionalism with your domain name. You're setting expectations. Okay? You want to come across professional. Very important, keep the name short and sweet. You want to keep it to 27 characters or less between the two dots. www.27characters.com that's very important for text ads. If it's any longer than that, then it won't show up. It'll, it'll, part of it will show up. Also, while you're creating your name, you want to uh, capture similar domain names. In case somebody looks for your domain specifically and they misspell it, well, you want them to go to your website instead of somebody else's. Okay? I know people out there who ask people, hey, what's your website? Because then they go home and pick ones that are slang the spellings of what you have, so they can capture your clients if they go if they misspell. So make sure you capture similar domain names. I'm pretty sure we'll this makes sense. Mm -hmm. That does, possibly. Yeah, except for that one right there. That's okay, though. I'll let it pass. Right. It's a thumb. <laughs> it's a thumb. <laughs> it's in the right direction. <laughs> All right. Next, take the time to get a beautiful site built for your business. Put your uh, offer in big, bold text up front, what your client's going to get by going with you. Put a brief value-oriented description right below that, and then put a big call-to-action button. Your ideal client's one button to fulfilling their emotional need with you right now. Okay? Keep all the text on your site concise and effective. Now, before I go any further, who here does not already have a website? Raise your hands. Okay, for those of you who raise your hands, I want you to write down something. Don't trip over the dollars to save dollars. Okay? It's worth paying a few hundred dollars to have a website built, or paying even less with us, in order to make tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit in the long run. So I got three more words for you. Just do it. Okay? Get a website. It's a must. Just remember that we're playing Google's game here, and they own the keys. And if you're going to beat the game, you've got to learn to play by their rules. Google is a business after all, and they decide what to show or not show on their search pages. They can decide not to show your website. They can decide not to show your app. They are a business. So, and I can tell you, after three and a half years and thousands of dollars spent on online advertising, they have a long list of policies, and they are not always so clear. 
Okay, say, uh, say Zoom if you like the past four, three and a half years with me. Zoom. 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 Making sure you're paying attention. Anybody have any questions about this? All right. Remember this slide. Okay. Easy to remember domain name, kmmates.com. Easy to understand offer. Easy to find what to take action now. Just a, a, now you know where to go to. Get your website built and online fast. Okay. This is how you want your website to look. Okay. Now that your website is open and uh, out there for attention, uh, sorry, I'm getting confused. Now that your website is up and ready for attention, what do you got to do? You got to grab attention. You got to get people to come into your business, okay, into your storefront. So to do that, we're going to use Google AdWords. That's adwords.google.com. Okay, it's Google's free platform for advertisers. And AdWords has the following structure, which I would like to compare to going out to eat dinner. Okay, you have your type of restaurant, you have your menu of selections, and then each plate has its carbs and proteins. And pain encompasses all the ads for a particular type of business, right? Much like a restaurant serves a particular type of food. Okay? So if you're if you are a realtor investor, you're both, then you want to have a separate campaign for each. For your realtor side, one for your investor side. Okay? Now just like a restaurant serves people looking for that specific food in a certain geographical location, you want to do the same for your campaign. This example campaign is only going to show ads to people looking for what this person offers in this highlighted region, which can be adjusted from the global level down to the city level. Okay? Say aha if this is making sense. Aha! Uh -huh. Alright. Inside each campaign, you can have multiple ad groups, just like a restaurant has multiple selections on the menu. Okay? And each ad group can be set up to serve a different need of your ideal client. Alright? So again, if you are a realtor, and you work with both listings and buyers, you want to have a separate ad group for each. You don't want to mix the two. Okay. Do I have any questions about this so far? No. Okay. Now remember what we're doing here. Okay. Your ideal client comes in with an emotional must-have. Okay, and they type a search up here called a keyword. It's the keyword that triggers Google to return solutions to them in the form of web pages. <coughs> ads are at the top. It's the it's the keyword that triggers which ads Google is going to show. Okay. So keywords are much like the carbs on the dinner plate. They're the emotional energy used to show your ads. Okay, think about your ideal client. Put yourself in their desperate shoes. What are they thinking right now? What are they going to go to Google and type in? Okay, write this down. Action-oriented clients type action-oriented keywords. Why? Because they have a problem. They're motivated to sell. They're motivated sellers They need to take action now. They're not going to go to their mailbox. They're going to go online. I need to sell now. I need to sell fast. That's the first place they go, even if they have mailers on the table. So as keywords are the carbs on the dinner plate, the text ads are like the protein. Okay? They give their business the strength to capture your client's attention and reel them into your website. Make sure that every line of your text ad counts, okay? especially your headline. Write this down. Your text ad is your client's first impression of your business. Okay? Think about it this way. You're driving down the highway, and you're surrounded by the usual Corollas, Civics, Camrys, etc. And then all of a sudden, a bright green Lamborghini speeds right by. What do you do? What do you look at? You can't help it. It grabs your attention. That's what you want your ads to be like. You want them to grab attention. You want them to stand out from the crowd. There are a lot of people doing ads online these days. They all look the same. I don't understand how they get business. They just they all look the same. We buy houses. We buy houses. We buy houses. All the same stuff. You want to stand out from the crowd. Raise your pinky if this is making sense. Okay. Either hand works. <laughs> Alright, so again, your client, your ideal client, comes in with an emotional must-have right now. You type in the trigger, or excuse me, the keyword, which triggers Google to show your ads. Okay? A specific keyword that helps Google show the ads that you've produced, that you told Google, hey, if these people type in this keyword, I want to show them my ad. Okay? Nod your head, yes. Very good. Just remember to follow Google's rules, or they'll never let your business take off. All right? So based on what you read here, can I post an ad that says I sell soda for a dollar a can? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I can. Thank you. Can I post an ad that says I sell Coke for a dollar a can? No. 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 Why not? Because it's yeah. trademark. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Oh. Or that's it. It could be illegal. Yes. <laughs> if you do not follow Google's policies, they will let you know immediately before your ad is shown even, with some sign of disapproval. 
And they'll either tell you in your, this is a picture of Google AdWords, one of the, uh, one of the shots of it, and they will tell you your ad's disapproved, which means it's not showing, or they will tell you suspended, okay, which means that they have shut you down. You are not advertising anymore. Okay? They could send you a nasty gram, of which I've received several in the last three and a half years, saying, hey, urgent warning, your AdWords account may get suspended, and they can suspend you indefinitely if they choose to. And you take care of that sort of thing? You call it Google. Google, what's, what's wrong? What do you need? Well, we, you know, it doesn't quite meet our policies on this. Okay, well, how do I fix that? Uh, let me transfer you to the other department. Okay, they, you know, they have all these different departments over there. Pretty crazy, actually. Um, kind, of a, kind of an aside. Um, one of the websites, yes? I didn't know they had a phone number. They have a phone number. <laughs> I've spent about 60 hours on the phone with Google. That's pretty cool, right? <laughs> Competition rate. 
This means how often your ads are showing compared to your competitors. Google keeps track of all this information. This is something you can find out on the AdWords platform. Click-through rate. Okay, this is your response rate for your advertising. It's the exact same thing as a direct mailer's response rate, the number of people that call you back. Um, how many people see your ad versus how many actually click on it? Okay, the percent. Conversion rate. This is how many people actually request an offer from you. Okay? In a direct mailer, they call you to request the offer by phone. Hey, send me an offer. Right? Send me a real offer. When you're doing online advertising, you're having people go into a contact page where they request an offer by hitting the submit button after they give you their information. That's called converting. Okay? So they first have to respond to your ad with the click-through rate, and then they have to convert on your webpage and ask you for an offer. <coughs> Same thing as any other form of marketing. Deal rate. This is up to you at a personal level. This is how or this is your rate at closing deals that actually ask for an offer. Okay? So an expert like Chris, he probably closes somewhere around 25% plus of the, of the offers that he sends out. They actually turn it into closed deals. For most beginners, down here in the 5 to 10% range. Okay, because you're inexperienced. You gotta go out there and do more deals, send out more offers, you know, talk to people, figure out how this, how this uh, business goes. Now, any form of marketing, if you haven't gone from average to decent in three months, hire an expert, okay? Be a smart businessman, businesswoman, hire an expert to help you out. 10 million leads, 10 BL, that's where I'm at after three and a half years and thousands of dollars spent doing this. Um, it takes a long, it takes a long time to get there, okay? In fact, say cha-ching if you'd like to save thousands of dollars with me. I can get your ads there fast. In fact, here's some real life examples from campaigns I'm managing right now to show you it's completely possible to do better than average and to continue to improve. Okay, that's my mission, is to always improve, not only for myself and my family, but for those that I work with as well. Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, maybe this uh, $3.17, maybe this click happened at 3 a.m. in the morning when there's hardly anybody competing. Maybe this click at $18 happened at 10 a.m. in the morning when everybody's online looking to sell their house. Okay? And, and, okay? So it varies greatly with supply and demand in the marketplace. Average position. This is your position on the page. For this campaign right here, my average position, which is true across most of my campaigns, but was in the top two places, top two positions on the page. 1.5, average of 1 and 2. All right? Click-through rate, CTR. This is where you begin to judge how high quality the leads are that are coming into your page, coming into your ad. Okay? These clicks right here, uh, what this is saying is 45% is 100% this so fluke. This. Don't pay attention to that one. This 45% right here, that's real. 45% of the people that saw this particular ad on this campaign I was running clicked on the ad. Okay, that means it was highly relevant to what they were looking for. It spoke to their emotional need at that time. Okay, and they really clicked with it. Like, that's pun intended. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't help it. Um, does this make sense? Yes. Okay. Right here, this is, a, this, is the, uh, this is your competition rate. Right here. It's called impression share also. 95, so this is saying that my ad was shown 95% of the time in positions 1 and 2. My next nearest competitor, showed, he showed all his ads only 74% of the time in positions 3 and 4. Okay, so this gives you a breakdown of how well you're competing against other advertisers out there. And then this down here is from Google Analytics, which I'll talk about in a minute. This is saying right here that 2 out of every 3 that went to this contact page that I have set up, click through and ask for a bona fide offer. Can you imagine that? Two out of every three people coming to you and saying, I want an offer from you? It's pretty good. Okay? If that doesn't happen to all my pages, it happened in that one. That's a real number. But here's something to think about. A smart marketer like Chris or you guys hires an expert to run the ads for them and gets 11 times the deals of their average competitor for maybe an hour's worth of work total. Okay, point to yourself and say smart marketer. Smart marketer. Come front and say expert. Expert. <laughs> you know where to find it. I'm playing with you guys. Okay? Uh, write this down. To win daily, you got to be smarter than your competition. Okay? It's never, ever, ever about working hard. If you're going out there and you're busting your butt putting out banded signs for hours late at night, how do I know this? Uh, if you're spending hours on direct mail, you know, signing and stuffing and doing whatever else, um, you're, you're working too hard, honestly. Okay? There are better ways to do things. You can set up online ads real quick or have them set up for you, and you're good to go. You just have to keep monitoring them. With online ads, we can do all these things you see here in a flash to get you more of the deals you really want. Okay? Photographing. <coughs> Customers and competition change their needs by the minute. Okay? And traditional ads just don't have the flexibility to keep up with that. Okay? Online ads do. Okay, how long does it take to cycle a direct mailer to see if it actually works or not? On average. I need that Four times. Time. Four times, about how long time wise? Usually about a month. month. About a month, about a month usually. Uh -huh. So it takes you a month to figure out if it's even working. After you've spent the 23 hours of talking to people, setting it up, $1,400 to send it out. Uh, online ads, change them in an instant. Put them out there the next second. Okay, if it's not working, change it. It's a fast business these days. Oh, well, back to this. How many believe that perceptions can change in an instant? Raise your hands. Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly. The stock market changes on a whim, right? So, unfortunately, online, Google gives us protections against that with these tools. Okay? They want us to succeed. They want us to keep paying their money to advertise. Okay? So, these tools here, let me talk about them Google Analytics. Uh, and these are free. You guys can go ahead and you know, set up your website if you have already. Put them into these tools. Start working with them. Google Analytics is a site where um, you enter your website, you register with them, and Google will tell you everything that's happening to your website. They'll tell you what kind of people are going there, where they're from, whether they use a <coughs> cell phone, how long they stay on your page, what page they're going to. The best way to use this is to tell what people are doing on your website. If they go into your home page and then they leave right away, then your web page is not working. Okay? That's what this is useful for. You want people to go into your website and poke around a bit. You want them to go to your contact page and ask for an offer. Okay, so you need to, again, you have to keep score. You, know, you have to track what's going on. Google Trends is a fantastic tool for figuring out what uh, the popularity of keywords has been over the last 15 years. Google has data on everything. 
everything for the last 15 years, everything that's ever been searched for, or anybody that's ever put their information into Google, they have the data. You can go back 15 years for keywords such as um, such as Britney Spears. She was hot back in 2000, uh, 2005. Okay, in 2008, foreclosures and short sales were hot. A hot item for searches. People were very interested in short sales and foreclosures. Why? Because that's what was happening to them. They were searching for that kind of stuff. So you go back and look at Google Trends, they'll show you a graph with a huge spike in 2008, 2009 to show you that there was a lot of, a lot of traction on those keywords. Mm -hmm. Google Webmaster. You put your website in there, and Google will tell you on a technical level if there's anything wrong with your website. Does it have a virus on it? Is something not right that Google doesn't like? They'll tell you exactly what it is. They want your website to work, because they want you to pay them money to advertise to get people to your website. Page Speed Insights. This gives you a uh, good feeling for how fast your website loads up on a mobile device and on a desktop. People want fast. Everybody wants fast, don't you? Yeah, you guys want fast. I want fast, right? This will tell you how fast your site loads up and whether people are going to enjoy that experience or not. Okay, it's very important. Not only that, you can get a feel for the entire playing field out there. Okay, kind of like watching the footage of an old football game to see what your competitors are up to. Um, you can get a feel both at the local level and the global level to see what uh, people are doing. If you like what another competitor is doing, copy it. Everybody copies each other. Okay, I'm serious. If you like, if you like something that's on another website, copy that layout. I'm not saying copy the exact text, right? But do something similar, right? So does all this really work? Well, you bet it does. Okay, but don't take my word for it. Listen to this guy. Okay, this guy is a broker in Orlando, Florida. He has 149 realtors working for him. He'd been toying with ads since about 2009. He really got heavy into it in 2013 when he saw the advantages. Um, he just, he just couldn't keep up with it. He ran out of time. So he hired somebody smart to run the ads for them. On day two, after taking over his ads in 2015, I increased the effectiveness of his ads by 3,400%. Hire an expert. Wow. That's what smart people do. Smart business people. Julie Langer, she's a beginner realtor investor in Claremont, Florida. She's been doing it about eight months now. She was so enamored with the amount of leads that we got her that she posted a uh, Facebook post showing her ad at the top of the page, getting those leads. And we serve a lot of other people in the real estate community as well. We are based out of Orlando, uh, but you can see that we also serve people on a national level. In fact, we brought most of you here with the advertising that we've done for Chris. Um, so bottom line, Google advertising works. And for those of you who are ready to take serious action, you now know where to go to get more deals more often. In case any of you are curious, here's the price of our services normally, but we slash those tonight just for you guys. As requested by Chris for tonight only, we're offering you guys the online accelerator, something that we just came up with. Um, you get two months of our expert Google plus Facebook advertising management for the price of one, plus we're waiving the activation fee for you guys forever. Um, and if you don't have a website already, no problem. This deal cannot be found on our website. It's, it was really made especially for you guys here in Las Vegas. Uh, get a total value of 13 hours 75 tonight only for just $4.99. Okay, so head back to that table tonight and pick that up. But before you ask any questions about it, I'm going to, I'm going to show you something, some educational content that is, your head's going to explode. Okay, this is simple. Okay? Because this is exactly what I'm doing with my investing right now. I just sold five houses in the past two months. Okay, doing exactly this. How to respond to leads instantly and send offers in 30 minutes or less. Okay, this is a fast game. This is the future of real estate, right here. And I'm doing it. And I can help you guys do it as well. First, you got to set up a website. Okay, now I'm stepping through the processes, the processes that I've gone through to get this set up. You got to set up a website that builds trust and professionalism. You want to build rapport with the people that come into your business. Okay, then you set up your on your excuse me your online ads to attract people into your website. Okay, you got to have ads that speak to their emotional need. Right, you have to know who your ideal client is. Otherwise, how can you talk to them? Okay, if you're a wholesaler and you start advertising for you know uh, dilapidated houses. Uh, there's something that's incongruent there. Okay, if you're a wholesaler looking for buying holes, it might be something different there. And I'm not picking on wholesale, I'm just wholesaling the street. I'm just saying, you gotta know exactly what you're looking for for your particular criteria. Okay? Once you set up your ads and you bring people into your website, you wanna have uh, you wanna have a customized CRM set up. Okay? Does everybody here raise your hands if you know what a CRM is? Okay, okay. This is this is where it's at. Okay, the CRM. A CRM is called is, is known as a customer relationship manager. Okay, it's a piece of software 
that works on the back end of most websites these days. Okay, it looks like a website when you log into it. Uh, it's in the cloud, you might say. Um, what it does is it allows you to take in, take in uh, sales leads. Okay, it'll organize them for you. It'll put all their data into their own little spot for each of the sales leads that you get. Um, it could be buyer's leads or whatever too, it's just leads. Um, and then it'll also crunch numbers for you. Okay, it'll do calculations. It'll also send out emails for you automatically. It'll send out emails when you touch a button. You can set up to automate processes for your entire real estate business. A lot of people use Podia, a lot of people use Zoho for this very same thing. Okay, I recommend Zoho because that's, that's what I use. So you can set up a CRM, a customized CRM on the back end of your web page, and it'll allow you to embed a contact form, which means you grab the HTML of that contact form and put it on your website. If you're using something like Weebly to build your website, just copy and paste. Okay? And now you have this contact form on your web page. Your lead comes in, they click your ad, they go into your website, they go into your contact form, they fill out the information, they hit submit at the bottom. Instantly, their information goes into the CRM, and the CRM sends out an email to them in seconds, saying, hey, I see that you contacted me, I think that's great, I'd love to send you an offer, give me a couple minutes on that. By the way, do you want to tell me anything about the house? What are the estimated repairs? Do you want to send me any photos? What do you want to tell me about it? So you start building rapport instantly. The CRM does this automatically for you. Okay? So that, raise your thumb if this is making sense so far. Okay. Mines are, are getting low. Okay. <laughs> when the lead clicks your ad and asks for an offer via your CRM contact form, you are also instantly notified that they requested your offer. So not only did it send an email to them saying, hey, I know that you contacted me, I'm going to get you an offer. It also sends an email to you saying, you better get this person an offer. They just contacted you. You sent it right to your phone, to your email, whatever you're looking at. Once you do that, once the CRM gathers their information, it puts it into, um, it organizes it into like, uh, like a lead card, almost like an index card with all this person's information on it, okay, as an analogy. All their information, their address, their phone number, their name, all that stuff will be on there. And if you have your CRM customized in such a way, you can have it um, such that you can go in, find their address, go to your comps, like go to the MLS or Zillow or whatever you guys use, get the uh, dollar price per square footage, put that into your CRM, and say, okay, all done, and it'll calculate your offers for you, your three offers that you send out back to your leads, or whatever you want to do. You guys know about the three offers thing? Okay, that's fine. Usually when we're investing and we, uh, and we find a house that we're interested in buying, we send them three offers. Cash only, uh, cash, plus, uh, cash plus terms, and then terms only. Okay? You can have your CRM do all this for you. You can have it done at the touch of a button. All you got to do is put in the number that you're willing to work with, and it'll send the offers back out to them. So at the touch of a button, it's going to send three offers out to my customers, saying, hey, I'm offering you cash only. I'm offering you a hybrid. I'm offering you terms only. Which do you prefer? Okay, and then they can get back to me by email and accept an offer. And all these offers are auto-filled with their personal information. Hey Bob, I saw that you offer, or I saw that you contacted me. I'll get back to you in a second. Hey Bob, here's three offers. Which one do you prefer? Okay, I'm getting these offers out in 30 minutes or less using this thing right here. Okay, I actually work a full-time job. I'm an engineer uh, by trade, and this is how I get my offers out at work. Offers come to me to my web page, they come straight to my phone, by email. I respond to them instantly. As soon as I get their comp in my phone, I hit the button, I send them out three offers, they can choose to accept them or not. It's that fast. That's the future of real estate right there. If you're taking hours to get offers back, you're getting on the slow side. Okay, serious. Serious. You go out and look up YouTube on the podium and so you're going to find a lot of information about this nowadays. It's what people are doing. Does that make sense to you all? Yeah. Did you learn something from that? Oh, yeah. Yes. Alright, fantastic. So again.